Hi, this is Jim Feist in Las Vegas. I have a really special announcement. I'm very excited about this game. It's a personal best game of the year in the tournament. That's right. This is a big play. I personally put a lot of money on this game, and we're selling it online as a personal best game of the year in the tournament. It's $1,000 online. But as a special, you can get it for $19 with a guarantee. That's right. Win or the rest of the tourney through April 8th is free. That's right. Last week I nailed my tourney dog of the month as Iowa State beat Notre Dame. Very easy victory. So get on board for this one because this is going to be an easy victory as well. Personal best game of the year in the NC2A tournament. That's right. It's $1,000 online and you can get it for $19 when you make the phone call right now. 1-866-841-1655. And remember, there's a guarantee with this. This game will win, or you get to play through April 8th in all the tournament games. Now, I got some information about the what's been going on and uh, the lines for this week. The first game we're going to see this week, I think, is on Thursday, and it's Miami of Florida over Marquette. And the total, the game opened five. It's up to five and a half. Miami of Florida played a pretty tough game the other night against Illinois, and arguably... With a couple calls going the opposite direction, Illinois could have won that game. You've got to remember, too, that Miami of Florida is a team that lost the Florida Gulf Coast. That's right, folks. This team from nowhere that nobody's ever heard of that has a coach with a hot wife, and everybody's talking about that online and YouTube, and she's a very attractive young lady. Uh, and the engagement ring came in a box of Dunkin' Donuts, by the way, which was very impressive. Uh, but this Miami of Florida team has been a very good team, ACC team. Marquette has been very fortunate. They beat uh, Davidson. Eh, that was questionable. That, I, that was really a, a meltdown by Davidson. And then they got lucky against uh, Butler. That was a tough game, one or two-point games in a row. Going up against Miami of Florida, who's a premium team from the ACC. Big East, ACC matchup, 5-5.5, five, five total is 127. Uh, it should be very interesting to watch. Now, the second game is Syracuse and Indiana. And Syracuse just blew their game against California the other night. Uh, tw they, they missed 15 free throws. They were a disaster the last five minutes of the game. Blew a big halftime lead. California out of the Pac-12 uh, played pretty impressively, but they played pre impressively against UNLV, which is really not a very good Mountain West team. Please don't, don't tell me they're really that good. They're not. And now Bennett announced he's going to the NBA, so they're going to even be worse unless they can recruit somebody. But uh, Syracuse was not impressive in that game. Yes, they blew out Montana in the previous game, but Montana really, uh, that you're talking about a mid-major that's a low mid-major. So I'm not really too sure that we can depend on Syracuse. However, Indiana, uh, they got, uh, you look at the game against Temple, and they barely beat Temple. They opened in this game 6 and 135. It's down to 5.5. The total's up a half a notch. Uh, they beat Temple, marginal victory, and Temple was 3 out of 24 from 3. 3 out of 24, folks. That's about, what, 7%? That, that's about as awful as you can get, and Indiana barely beat them. That is not an impressive victory. So here you got a matchup type of zone defense that they're going to have to shoot over. It's a different kind of team. Uh, they had their letdown game against California. They let down against Louisville at the second half on tired legs in four, four games in four days. But they're going to come refresh, refreshed in this game. So when, these are the things to consider when you're deciding who to back. Now we move on to the second set of games. We got uh, Ohio State hosting, well not hosting, but they're in Los Angeles against Arizona. Arizona is a team that I really have not a lot to say about. I mean, they had a, a soft play-in situation in Belmont and Harvard, so they really haven't really played anybody. Ohio State's been red hot. I think they've won 10 straight games. Uh, and in the Big Ten, that's pretty tough. And then, you know, the, the couple games in the NCAA. I'm not going to say a lot about this because I have really – no insight to either one of these, except Arizona had about the best bracket to get to this spot at this point. LaSalle, Wichita, these are two, uh, you know, out of the 
mix kind of teams, 12s and 13s. Wichita uh, hit, I think it was 13, 14 out of 26 for, uh, threes, and they hit all their foul shots against Gonzaga. Gonzaga's been a disappointment since they started getting into the NC2A. Everybody rates them very high. This year they're number one uh, seed in the tournament. They never go far. I mean, it's just that I shouldn't say never, but they have very rarely gone far in the NCAA tournament. Big disappointment. They would have probably won this game had Wichita not hit all of their free throws and hit 53% of their threes. Nobody ever does that. And they shot a lot of them, and they made a lot of them. But Wichita is a solid team, and uh, they're going to come to play. But LaSalle, they played the play-in game, and then they played against Kansas State. They blew up in the second half, almost didn't win that. Then they had the game against Mississippi, and there might have been a missed call at the end of the game against Henderson, which he maybe should have been shooting some foul shots. Instead, LaSalle got the ball, drove to the basket, and got the, got the points and won the game. Narrow victory, and the coach, the, 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 the officiating, they either make calls that don't exist or they miss calls that do exist. But that goes on all the time. It's nothing different, football, basketball, baseball. The officials always make mistakes. They're human. But they, for, overall, they do a pretty good job. This is a real tough matchup. Interesting, though, LaSalle is an underdog. Wichita opened three and a half, and it's up to four and a half. Now, that's a pretty big move when two teams look on paper to be pretty even. I think the difference here is who Wichita beat to get to this point. They beat Pittsburgh, and they annihilated them. And then they knocked off the number one seed in Gonzaga. LaSalle did not do that. They beat Kansas State in Kansas. So there was a big partisan crowd there for Kansas, and then they knocked off Mississippi. They're not getting as much respect for their wins as Wichita is getting for theirs. The total opened 133. It's up to 135. I kind of agree with that. It looks like it might be an up-tempo game. Moving on to Friday, we've got Oregon at Louisville. Ah, this is really an interesting ball game. Oregon's beat Oklahoma State, which comes out of the Pac-12. And other than Kansas, they're not. It's not really strong. And then they beat St. Louis, which is a team I was wrong about for this particular matchup. I thought St. Louis was going to go far, but. In reality, they just couldn't hit their threes. They were, they were absolutely horrible in hitting their three-point shots. And, you know, a lot of this tournament stuff right now, the threes have taken over. Fundamental basketball is out the window for a lot of these clubs, and it's all about what they do in their threes. If they hit their threes, they win, or they're competitive. If they miss their threes, then they got to make it up with good internal defense or and or turnovers, and they must hit their free throws. So... The threes come to play a lot. If you hit your threes, you got a chance. If you don't hit your threes, you better do the other things well. And uh, again, St. Louis did not do that, and Oregon came out with the victory. Louisville, of course, has been red hot. Everybody knows, and I think everybody thinks right now, that they're going to be the winner of this, this tournament. That remains to be seen. We still have some games to be played. Michigan State, Duke, talk about coaches. Izzo against Co Coach K. You got two of the best. I mean, this is a classic matchup. Duke opened one and a half, and they're up to two. Uh, they shut down Creighton and Michigan State. Uh, well, they, I mean, they were basically playing close to home. They had a party with, with their game. So that's going to be a war. Uh, then you have uh, <clears throat> you got Michigan against Kansas. The big guy in, inside for Kansas is a problem for anybody. And what they did to North Carolina at the end of that game, at the second half, I should say, was ugly. And uh, Withy is, is an offensive force and defensive. You can't get near the basket because you're going to swat everything away. Kansas is well coached, as is, um, as is Michigan. This is going to be a pretty good ball game, as the, total, the, the line will tell you. Open one and a half Kansas up to two. The total is 138 down to 136. They're looking for a defensive battle. I can't argue with that at all. Uh, two good coaches, two good teams, lots of talent on the floor, and it should be a war. Now we come down to the last game on the board, and this game, this is the one everybody, I think, other than the coaches and the players on the other teams, who everybody would like to see Florida Gulf Coast 
raise the trophy at the end of the day. I don't know that that's going to happen. They're, we've got an in-state rival against Florida. Uh, Florida opened 12 and a half up to 13 most places. I see a little buyback and a little 12 and a half coming up again. The total's getting up, bet up a little bit, 132 to 133. Uh, this Florida Gulf Coast... I mean, I didn't see very many. No, I didn't see any of their games until they got into the tournament. I didn't even know they existed because there's no lines on them. And if there's no lines on the games, I don't pay much attention to them. Uh, they've covered every spread they've had. Uh, they're, I think they're 5-0 and or 6-0. and Very impressive win over Georgetown. Very impressive win over San Diego State. San Diego State's a Mountain West team, very overrated conference, so I never really expect much out of the Mountain West, and I was right in that regard. Florida uh, struggled a little bit at the end of their game, but they built up a big lead, slumped in the middle, and still ended up covering comfortably. Florida's a very well-coached team. Billy Donovan, um, Florida Gulf Coast, uh, I can't remember the coach's name, but I guess we're going to have to give him kudos for having the hottest wife. So, But anyway, this team is covering the spread. They're very talented. If you watch them go up and down the floor, they do it with spirit, fire, passion, Good guard play, they can dunk, they can shoot from the outside, they play good defense, they're in your face all the time. This could be a war maybe closer than people give them credit. Now, let's go back to that uh, special that I have. Out of these games, I have one monster play. That's right, it's a personal best game of the year. This is a game that's on sale right now. Personal best game of the year online for $1,000. You can go online right now and buy this game for $1,000, and you'll get my personal best game of the year. Last week I hit Iowa State over Notre Dame. I am going to hit this game, and I'm going to hit it really big. Now, special is if you make the call to 1-866-841-1655, you can get this game for $19, and there's a guarantee with it. If the game doesn't win, you get to play through April 8th for free. That's right. The game must win, or you play for free in the tourneys, through April 8th. That's right, 19 bucks. You can get this $1,000 play plus the guarantee. Make the call right now, 1-866-841-1655.